Hi, Arrow. Uh, Ramona's here too. Ramona, we've got to talk. Ah, uh, your podcast, girl. You, you, you have Ooh. to. The emotion that you put into it and the way that you share the story. Are are you an actress? Because I mean, that I really got into this to where it was like, my God, she's talking about this in real time. Oh my God. Thank you. That is a great compliment, and I will take it. <laughs> now, you, you know what? No, I'm not an actress. And, and um, But, you know, I'll tell you what, it, it's a lifelong passion project, and the opportunity to, you know, tell the story on these platforms, I feel so lucky and I have so much gratitude to even be on, of course, being on your show, and, and it's just, it's, it's you know, and, and quite frankly, Errol, I'll be honest, you know, I have I haven't, I haven't gone through the death yet. And so this is actually, you know, it's a, it's a therapy session for me. <laughs> so that's why there's so much emotion because I haven't really dealt with it yet. Oh, the way that you were describing, you know, walking through Moscow and, and, and your father, you know, you, you were standing, uh, you know, a little bit away from him and, and you were alone in that moment. I mean, I, I could hear it in your voice. I mean, it really felt like that you were about ready to cry. Yeah, you know, it, it, it's, you know, you never, when when you're with my dad, it, it's always an adventure. He's a, a risk taker at heart. He's an adventure seeker. And he had, I had no idea. Of course, over the years, he would send me records and all that stuff. But I had no idea his popularity in Moscow. And late at night, when his, like I said, when his security was gone, he, he just kind of said, let's go. And, <laughs> and, and, you know, I'm in a different, you know, I can't, I don't understand the language. I don't know anything. And this square was kind of empty, by the way, it was empty. <laughs> and then we get in the middle of it. And, and like I said, in the podcast, you know, it's like, you know, he just said, wait for it, wait for it. Yep. And then all of a sudden Dean Reed and boom, and I was floored and, and scared. You know, it's like, you know, no, no longer am I next to him. I've been pushed on to the side. And so it, it was, it was a, a great experience for my first night in Moscow. <laughs> The name of the podcast is Red Elvis. And, and, and you know, it's as much as I want to say this is in-depth, it is a crime podcast and things like that, but it's also entertaining in the way that you present it with the effects, the way that you bring in sound bites, and, and it, it just draws you closer and closer into the story. Well, that's great to hear. You know, we had a great team. They, they gave me some great producers, uh, seasoned producers, and, and people who were also very passionate about telling the story. So, um, you know, how they put it together, I, 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 I agree with you. It is, it has turned out to be such a good, I'm a big pod, you know, podcast listener and especially true crime and things like that, of course. And so I'm very pleased and very happy to hear, you know, uh, your takes from it. And so, yeah, no, it, it's been a great journey. I'll, I'll tell you my take on it. I mean, very, very professionally. I love how long it is. I, because I believe that every city, no matter how big the city is, it's a 20 minute city and you give us about 31 minutes of sound. And I think that is the perfect size. Yeah, that's, that's great. You know, the thing is, is I thought, you know, an hour, you know, how am I going to tell this story in, in such a, a short amount of time, but they know their business mm -hmm. by heart <laughs> and they know, they know how, you know, how things go and, and people are in the car, you know, from, you know, 30 minutes or whatever they're doing or hiking, whatever they're doing. And it actually, it turned out that I could tell the story in, in the short amount of powerful um sections you know and episodes and uh we were able to do it and get it all in your father was such a ray of light with his creative energy how is it that he stepped into a dark country and became the red elvis well it was really his love for uh humanitarian mm -hmm. uh for for you know he saw the poverty in south america in the in the 60s and and he was uh, his mentor had said you know if things work out great for you you have to use this platform to um 
you know, the fame has only one value and, and is for the cause of people and to better their lives. And so he would, for uh, uh, for poverty and, and lack of education and, and medical and all that, he decided he's that's what he's going to do. He's he's going to take his platform and spotlight those areas and come to a place of, you know, where universal health care could take care of everybody. So he would take the best of every government, put it in a bucket. I always say bucket. And that's what he talked about. And most of it was about socialism. Now, having said that, he did, you know, he had problems with each government and, and, and you know, with America, he, he loved the freedom of speech and, and that kind of thing. But, but he how he ended up in East Berlin, quite frankly, was because he fell in love with his second wife. And he is one of those people that he doesn't just sit on the couch and say, this is how things should be done. He went to the front lines and he fought and put his life at risk at every turn. And so he thought the best thing I could do is to actually live in a socialist country mm -hmm. and experience it for myself so that I, you know, so I can find out the truth you know, and, and that's what he did. And he stayed there for, uh, for 15 years. And so, mm -hmm. I was gonna say, do you, do you think that because he was, you know, such an activist and things like that, that that's what got in the way, because that's the thing about this podcast is that you, you take us along the way. It's like, you, you, you give us like little Easter eggs that it's like, Oh my God, now I know I'm going <laughs> to figure this out right now because you, you drop little hints as, as, as you're, as we're moving through it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and I'm glad that that's coming across. You know, um, we do, did need to go back and kind of tell his amazing story and the roller coaster ride that he was on and, and the risk that he took and how, how he had access to all these leaders and, and, you know, and they were just they were just big fans of his, right? And so that's how he got access of his music and his records and, and his um, films. But uh, at the end of the day, it's still a mysterious death. We don't know what happened to him. He was found in a lake, and, and we just don't know, you know, the uh, between the police report and the autopsy and the Stasi files, it just, it, it raises too many, it raises more questions than answers. And at the time, I was 18 years old. I wasn't ready to dive into this. Mm -hmm. And and so um, my mother, you know, she kept notes and my grandmother. And and so now I've spent two years dedicating myself to look everything over, digital, digitalize everything and see what the timeline is and talk to certain people and discover that. Um, you know, it, it's a little, there's, like I said, too many questions. It's a little too mysterious. There's too many red flags and there's too, peop too many people who would benefit for him to, to not be there. And um, so that's what we're, you know, that's what we're headed to. We're headed to, to investigating it. Well, you, you clearly state that this was not done by a professional because if it had been the KGB or somebody like that, they would have professionally done the job, but they, there, there's a lot of mistakes in this. Yes. Yeah. You know, um, the scenarios, uh, there, there's a lot of scenarios going on and, and, um, I mean, honestly, it, it could have been, you know, they wanted to just scare him. There, there's a lot of scare tactics uh, happening throughout his life journey. And and this could have been a scare tactic and, and he was ac accidentally killed. He could, you know, I mean, there's a, a lot of different things that we've come up with that could make sense. And then once we dive into it, we're going to, you know, start to eliminate some of those scenarios. But um, I mean, it could have been a hit. It could have been um, accidental. It could have been a lot of different things, and and we need to just dive in into it. But, but at the end of the day, it is a humanitarian story. He, you know, he fought for people. And when you ask anyone, you know, Russian, German, or whatever, they they just, oh my God, you know, he represented us. He, they love him. They absolutely love him, and that's always warmed my heart. And 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 actually provided the the power behind me to actually tell the story here in America. You know, one, one of the things about, about your father's music, and because the first thing I did is I, I had to go and explore, because I've been in radio for 43 years. Why the heck have I not played a Dean uh, Reed uh, record and things like that? 
because when I go back and I listen to his music, I'm going, well, I know why, because his music came with purpose. It came with a plan. It, it had emotion involved in it where we were so candy coated here in the States. Yeah, yeah, you know, he he started with whatever Hollywood told him to to sing at first, but then when um, he he became such a superstar, you know, and and this is what happens today, right? You know, I mean, to to get on on the radio stations and and to get songs made, you first do what the studios tell you to yeah. do, and yeah. then once you 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 drop that record, the next record you get to use, you know, uh, if you write those songs, you get to to use your creativity and and actually write the songs you really want to write about and and that's what he was doing and 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 through his travels and the people he would talk to and the experiences that he had his songs would just become even more important and more um, just emotional and um, and that resonated with the fans right because it was about them he wrote about them and and that was something that in those countries people weren't really doing not on that level anyway not on such a high level again he you know he was the elvis in those countries and and that's the the amount of stardom he had and um and for him to debt instead of collecting millions of dollars and living in mansions and, and bentleys and rolls royces he decided you know what no i'm i'm going to live like them, I'm going to represent them, and I'm going to go and have dinner at their table in their homes, you know, or go at campsites, <laughs> and 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 experience their lifestyle and and be and be their spokesperson. Were you shocked when your producer came back from East Germany with all of those sounds from people who who knew of your father? I mean, I'm be, I mean, it's like he, he's a completely different part of the world, and they were speaking about your father in in some of the most positive ways. I mean, that one gentleman talks about that he learned about it, you know, be, through school that they they talked about Dean Reed. Yeah, that that was surprising to me about how they in the schools they actually taught um about my father you know it it it's always surprising right because i i was raised here in hollywood so it's always surprising when someone knows who my father is and and typically what i'll do is if, if i know you're russian at a certain age or um or german or even armenian you know um or Argentinian or anything like that, you know, I'll bring it up just to see what the reaction is and if, if they do know him. And the response is always so, po I've, I've heard so many positive things about him and, and it's, it's, it touches my heart. And I, I just, I can't believe it. I'm always surprised. And, and, and it's, it's wonderful to, to know that he was so many people's hero and that they really, you know, looked up to him as their, as their ambassador. One of the most haunting parts of the story in the beginning, and, and listeners need to know that they need to bring a, a tissue with them, is that when you returned to Russia to the funeral and, and they took your mother away and you were left there alone and you explain what it's like about, you know, that the, at least the last time I was here, my father was, you know, just a few feet away and he could help me escape. I had no one. My God. I mean, we, we all have had those moments and you really bring it to life in this you know, it, it's, um, thank you. It, it's, and I'm, again, this is, I haven't done therapy yet. So <laughs> I'm going through therapy now, I, you know, as far as uh, telling the story, but it is, um, you know, that was such a powerful moment. I didn't know that at the time, at the time, you're just trying to survive. You're yep. just trying to, to, to get through it. And, 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 and you're basically just going along, you know, you're just this, thing just going along and people there were strange like I said strange people on each side of me walking me through and it felt like a mile down rows and rows of mourners and the sound and and the the sight and everything just over was overwhelming and um you know I, I again I just kind of went through it and and then when they played his song over the loudspeaker so everyone outside could hear and and it was give me a guitar and it just you know i mean but listen it, you know i'm i'm a daughter my father was mysteriously you know died so this is a feeling like you said that universally 
everyone feels when you lose someone so dear, you know, you're, you're just, you know, you're in that moment and, and you're trying to find something to, to get through it. And it's super emotional. And, and so, um, yeah, and, and it just heightened with with the amount of sound of mourners that just, it, the whole thing was just crazy. I, it, it just was amazing. What I happens think. if your mother would not have saved all of the memorabilia that she did? I, I cannot imagine how your life would be today if you had not opened up that treasure chest. Yeah, you know, it. Uh, you know, I don't know about you, but it. You know, when I turned fifty, it it was. You know, and my mom passed. She was. You know, she was a valedictorian uh, in college in Alabama, and and she was a journalist, and she was. Uh, you know, she was actually his manager in the sixties and his publicist, and you could always tell her her pictures that she took because she would have him look to the left or look up to the right. You know, all these poses. But uh, she wrote uh, notes on absolutely everything. And also she was, you know, a frustrated writer. So she wrote scripts and she wrote timelines and she and and she tried to get me throughout those years, you know, from uh, the end of the 80s until, you know, the 2000s. It's, you know, she tried to get me involved and I just I wanted to live my life. And, and you know, I got married and all that kind of stuff. I wasn't ready. And so then when she passed, I, I thought, you know what, I need to look at my life a little bit and see what I want to do and, and what's left to do. And suddenly, you know, she was the matriarch. She, uh, she handed the baton to me and I decided, you know what, it's my responsibility to take this baton, learn about it. And she, like I said, she literally wrote me notes, knowing that I was going to come back into these storage spaces and these boxes and bins and, and go through the story. And she made it so easy. She kept absolutely everything. And so I have letters from him to her, mm. to when my grandmother died, to my, you know, her, her mother, his mother. I mean, so I have like an email, right? There's no email back then. Um, like an email, I have the back and forth and it just, it, you know, I, I think the next thing I'm going to do is probably do a book. Um, but it, these letters are so detailed and so good. I, I just, it was, it, it was a, nuggets. It was gold when I, I found all this. Wow. Ramona, you've got to come back to this show anytime in the future. You've got one heck of a story that needs to continue growing on all platforms, way beyond your podcast. Oh, thank you so much. I, I, I appreciate that. And I, you know, I am thankful and, and like I said, grateful for, for everything that comes my way, but, um, yeah, yeah. Let's, let's every Wednesday, listen in red Elvis. <laughs> Will you be brilliant today? Okay. Okay. Thank you so much for having me on your show.